This might be the coolest networking gear that you've never heard of. Sure, everyone always talks about Omada and Unify, guilty, but Ingenious has come through with a pretty slick setup of their own here. What we have here is a nice little networking stack consisting of a firewall, a switch, and a full fat Wi-Fi 6E access point. And we know that when it comes to networking, the software side is just as important as your hardware. Luckily, Ingenious comes in pretty hot with their cloud-based management software. And when I say cloud-based, I mean that it's only cloud-based. More on that later. So after using this stuff for about a month, am I ready to throw out all my other gear and become an Ingenious boy? Well, let's talk about it. So you may or may not be familiar with Ingenious. I had heard of them only because someone in my Discord bought an access point from them a while ago. They're a smaller private company based out of Costa Mesa, California, and have been around for about 20 years. I couldn't find too much information on them, but what I did find was that their headquarters is surrounded by California grapevines, which explains the, uh, the smell. <sighs> Smells like grapes. I'm kidding. <laughs> Oh my God, did I actually write that joke in there? Jesus Christ. But yeah, smallish networking company, never really seen any ads for them. Haven't talked to many people who've used their stuff, which is why I was very surprised with the quality of their hardware. At the heart of the setup, we have their ESG 510, which is their gateway that is gonna be essentially the brains of the entire network. It's got four 2.5 gig ports with two of those being for WAN and two of those being for LAN. Although you can use the second LAN port for a third LAN if you want. Oh, and one of the LAN ports is also PoE Plus enabled, so if you want to deploy a phone or access point in a smaller setup, pretty cool. It's got a quad-core processor that lists throughput speeds of 4 gigabits per second locally and 970 megabits per second over a VPN. You don't often see companies completely forego 1 gig ports in favor of 2.5 gig, but with access points getting faster and faster and 2.5 gig ports on desktops becoming more standard, I'm glad to see this. Also, the PoE port is a nice touch. Again, something you don't see too often on a firewall. With that said, you are paying for these features. This gateway is the cheaper of the two models, but still comes in at a price of $658. Yes, it's expensive, but let's compare that to a PFSense gateway from NetGate. In terms of specs, it lines up very closely with the SG4100, which is exactly what I run in my home lab, and that's $600, and that only has a one gigabit WAN. Now, I've never been one to say that NetGate hardware is cheap either, so I won't be the one to cast the first stone, that's for sure. One thing that does separate this from the others is that it is completely cloud managed. I first tried to access the fancy GUI that I'd seen while doing some research by navigating to the local IP address of the firewall like a good little boy. But I was greeted with a very generic page with extremely minimal capabilities. Like all I could do was change the name of the device, add a VLAN tag and toggle the WAN port. I initially thought I was missing something and spent like 10 minutes clicking around looking for the real stuff. Then it hit me. When they say cloud managed, they really mean cloud managed. I confirmed this with an ingenious rep and they informed me that yes, these devices are meant to be managed only from the cloud. I was taken back by this, but after thinking about it for a bit, it started to make a little bit of sense. These devices are designed for businesses and home lab enthusiasts. These aren't really meant to replace your parents all in one AT&T modem router access point combo meal. If you're deploying these, you probably have multiple locations, need the fancy management, and to make use of their auto site to site VPN that we'll take a look at in a bit. For these cases, it really is convenient to manage everything from the cloud since at the time of making this video, it's only possible to be in one physical location at a time. So half of me says, yeah, if you're building out a network using this gear, you probably have multiple WANs to be connected to the cloud. And even if you don't, what good is a gateway that isn't even connected to the internet? But the other half of me says, Dude, why don't I at least even have the option to do all this locally? Maybe I accidentally mess it up and can't connect to the internet anymore. Am I screwed now? Then the ginormous red flag is, what happens if Ingenious Cloud goes down or they sell off the company or decide to start charging money for cloud hosting? You'd pretty much be stuck with a bunch of paperweights. I mean, my Unify and Omada controllers both have the option to be controlled via the cloud, but 
also have the same functionality if you want to connect locally. I really wish Ingenious would consider this as I think it would help them gain more of the home lab user base. But anyway, moving on to the Switch, and again, a very nice piece of hardware, I must say. This is the ECS 2512FP, a layer two switch with eight 2.5 gigabit PoE++ ports with a total of 240 watts. It also has four SFP plus 10 gigabit ports, which is certainly a welcome addition. Apparently this is a discontinued product, but they have quite a few similar options with the closest being the ECS 2510FP, which is pretty much the same thing, except that it has two SFP plus ports instead of four and comes in at $548. Or if you like the ports of the 2512FP but don't care about PoE, then they have the vanilla 2512 for the same price. I mean, it's a solid switch. It does what it's supposed to do and has 120 gigabits per second of switching power. Neat. It does have a slightly audible fan if you were wondering. It's definitely not loud or high pitch, so it doesn't bother me at all, but I figured I'd let you guys know. Oh, and remember how the firewall had like no options in the local UI? Well, this has a bunch of options. What? This only made me more confused and I asked my ingenious contact about this. He said that the people who deployed these wanted local options, but they are moving to the cloud-based approach with these in future releases. Like, yeah, of course people want local options. Anyway, yeah, it's a solid switch and you're getting eight 2.5 gigabit PoE ports and four 10 gigabit ports. It's actually a reasonable price. All right, time for the last piece of the networking puzzle and that is the access point. Let's round this out with the ECW336. This is an absolute beast of an access point. It's a tri-band Wi-Fi 6E 4x4 access point that has 8.4 gigabits of throughput power. At 160 megahertz with a 4x4 client, you have a theoretical max speed of 4.8 gigabits per second to a single device. But Brett, I bet that thing only has a 2.5 gigaport, so checkmate nerd. Wrong. This dude has a 5 gig PoE port, so if you can find a 5 gig PoE switch, or probably 10 gig, then Boom, five gigabits per second of steamy network packets coming down the pipe. Sure, you could go with 4.8 gig between two Wi-Fi clients, but the problem with that is that, well, that's Wi-Fi. So you're never gonna get the theoretical max speeds. And two, four by four Wi-Fi 60 clients don't really exist, or I, I don't know of any. I tested this guy out by connecting it to my switch and then running a 2.5 gig connection to my PC and connecting to a six gigahertz Wi-Fi 6E band from a two by two client, which has a theoretical max speed of 2.4 gigabits per second. Running iPerf 3, I saw max speeds of just around two gigabits per second, with most tests averaging out around 1.7. That's still insanely fast and faster than any Wi-Fi device I've used personally. So if you want fast Wi-Fi speeds, this access point won't disappoint. Just make sure you have a compatible Wi-Fi 6E client setup and a dedicated six gigahertz SSID channel. Oh, and this dude comes in at $768, which I think is way too much for a home user. But if you're a business that's dealing with hundreds of devices in a single area and need that four x four with 8.4 gigabits of throughput, then this might not actually be a bad price. But am I throwing these up around my house? I mean, Ingenious wants to send me a bunch, but if I'm talking with my wallet, probably not. So in terms of hardware, it's really nice, kind of expensive, but seems like some premium stuff. And they do plan on releasing more hardware in the future at various price points. So I'd love to do a cheap Ingenious setup in the future with some of their priced for home user devices. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see that. But as I mentioned before, half of the networking war may be fought down in the trenches with the hardware, but the other half is happening up in the sky with your software. And to be more specific, the cloud. The Ingenious Cloud is meant to give you full control over your entire network from anywhere in the world. Let's jump into it. All right, here we are in the Ingenious dashboard. And as you can see, it is not just another Unify knockoff seems to be its own software and I can applaud them for that. You can see we have one gateway, one switch, and one access point. That is correct. 
and we have three client devices connected, two at five gigahertz and one at 2.4. Scrolling down, you get more information about the throughput through your WANs on the gateway, throughput through your access points. Then if you keep going, it'll show you your top access points, top clients, and top SSIDs in terms of traffic. And then at the bottom, we get our top applications and top operating systems. Personally, um, I can see the top applications being useful if you want to see what's sucking down all of your bandwidth. And for me, that seems to be a Windows update. Shocking. The top device operating systems, um, it's cool, but I personally don't really know what I would use that for. Then going over here into the sidebar, we can manage our access points, switches, and gateway by clicking on each of them respectively. Let's dive into the access points and see what we got. So obviously it's going to list our access points. We only have one and you can see a bunch of information about them here. But if you want even more, you can hover over the device and click on details. From here, you have a lot of options and a lot of data. It's actually pretty cool. So at the top, you have all of your information about the device, and this is gonna be very similar for both the gateway and the switch as well. But yeah, you can see all the stats on the device. We can even turn off the LED light. So unlock that. And if we turn the lights off, so yeah, no, no more LEDs. Scrolling down, you have information on your SSIDs. Again, more throughput information. Uh, you can change the radio settings, which I actually had to go in here and do. So for example, for the six gigahertz network, I went in and upped the target power and um, went in and modified the channel width because by default it was on 80 and we want that full fat 160. So this is where I went in to make that change. Then some mesh information, some DHCP information. If you want to change that to static, you can. And you can even add a photo. Uh, it's for if you're deploying like 100 of these for a business and you want a photo of where it is, it would be convenient to uh, have that in here. So yeah, pretty standard stuff here. But one thing that stuck out was this VIP. And all that really does is lets that device bypass any captive portal stuff that you set up later. So. If you have a business that has captive portal for your Wi-Fi access um, and you want your maybe your employees to just be able to bypass it, make them VIP on their device and they don't have to deal with that. Then you have stuff over here like topology, which is gonna break down um, how this is set up physically. Not very impressive for my tiny little setup, but they do have some information about the connections between devices by hovering over them, which is pretty cool. And if we want to configure our devices, you'd go over here to the cog wheel and into the device you'd like to adjust. So with access points, if you want to add or modify an SSID, this is where you would do it. And here you can see we have three SSIDs, two of them being 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, one being our fancy 6 gigahertz one for full fat juicy speeds. And one thing they advertise quite a bit is their site-to-site -site VPN and to access this, you would go into Gateway and Site-to-Site -site VPN. From here, you have essentially two options for doing Site-to-Site. -site. Now, this is going to require two separate gateways, obviously. Um, you don't technically need two ingenious ones. If you scroll down, you can see you can add a non-ingenious ingenious, non gateway. But if you have two, um, it's quite easy. You can select a type. There's Mesh VPN, and then there's Hub and Spoke, which looks like this. I, I kind of get it, but Mesh makes more sense to me. And then it will list your different hubs. So then underneath, you can select which interfaces you want to be able to communicate across that site to site. So for example, if we want our main LAN to, you would select it here. But if we don't, maybe we only want our IoT to be able to go site to site. Don't know why you'd want that, but you, you can do it. NAT traversal is going to be how these devices are going to communicate with each other. Now, automatically and done by Ingenious and the cloud is a pro feature, kind of annoying, but for most people, you're going to do manual, set your public IP and your port, and assuming you have port forwarding on, then this will work. They will connect to each other right away, and bada bing, bada boom, you have an automatic site-to-site -site VPN now. I'm going to cover this again in an in-depth video later, but um, I just wanted to show that feature off 
And of course, if you're using this gateway as your main firewall, you can go into your gateway settings, click on firewall, and from here you have all of your standard stuff, outbound rules, port forwarding, NATing, and allowed services, which um, I'm not too familiar with, but a uh, good thing they have this little hover over helper, which says allowed services to access the ESG. Thank you. But yeah, that's a quick walkthrough of the software. Again, um, I'm gonna have to create another dedicated video to go more in depth. And when that video is created, I'll link it down in the description. But uh, yeah, back to the hardware. So overall, what are my thoughts on Ingenious now that I had some alone time with them? Honestly, I'm quite impressed so far. Their hardware is rock solid with features that bring some uniqueness to a very saturated market. As I expressed, some of their stuff is quite expensive, but I don't mind paying a bit more if I'm getting a quality product. If you're looking for a more affordable solution for your networking setup, um, especially if you're deploying this in your home, then this probably isn't your jam. In terms of their software solution, I actually really liked it. it. Seems like they really put effort into designing a software to be intuitive enough for the average nerd to use, but not strip out necessary features that are necessary. Their site-to-site -site VPN implementation is really cool and further shows that this stuff is designed for businesses and enthusiasts, and that's okay. I mean, it's clearly not perfect. As I mentioned, you can only access this management system from the cloud and... Okay, so I wanted to clarify one thing, and that is that Ingenious does have an on-premises management network controller, but it's for their fit line, which is like more home user based. Uh, kind of like I mentioned before, but I want it for the actual fancy stuff for actual business users and high end stuff. Why it's only on this fit line, uh, I'm not exactly sure, but um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see that for the other stuff. If Ingenious can pivot on this and at least allow the option to host a controller locally like Unify or Omana, then I think we'd start seeing them creep a bit more into the home lab market. Let me know what you think down in the comments, but that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, then drop a like. Subscribe if you wanna see more content like this as I have some really cool networking stuff coming out. I wanna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my super amazing network software that is kind of only accessible in the cloud because locally it would be kind of weird, but I'm okay with that. You guys rock my socks. And if you're still watching, you're a real one. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one.